Yeah, I was born at 41 Monmouth Street in the Bramall area of Sheffield. What year? 1923. I went to Springfield Council School. That was just off Bramall Street, Brug Spring Lane. Okay. In Sheffield. In Monmouth Street, the, I lived with my mum and dad and... Uh, there was my mum's dad lived there and my father's father. So I had two grandfathers lived with us. I never had many problems at school. I, I was a bit of a devil at first, uh, but then the headmistress got me on the desk and she used to spit a little bit when she, when she spoke and she threatened me with the police, so I was quietened down. Actually, my birthday fell on Easter Monday. Uh, on, on the Monday that we should have gone back to school after Easter. And really, I should have stopped on at school, they should have kept me on. But I'd already applied for a job and got one, so they said, right, you can leave. I, I went to work at E.H. Pickford's in Ettlesall Road. As I said, they were the uh, Daimler, Lanchester, Lancaster, uh, and uh, Umber, Umber Hillman agents. And uh, at first I was uh, just the general lad in the garage. Used to have to wash, wash spare parts and scrape the floor where the grease were down and sweep up in general. And when it, after a while, I went on the uh, lubrication side where people used to bring the car in for servicing and they used to put them up on the ramp. And uh, then I'd been there a while when the uh, the war started. In Sheffield, yeah, but in Mammoth Street, yes. Uh, yeah, World War, war had broke out and, uh, well, I, I was... Uh, I wasn't quite old enough to go in the army then, but uh, I, uh, I I did get called up. And uh, before I got called up, we were in the Blitz in Sheffield. And uh, sirens went, we went down the cellars and uh, we were down there. And one of the fire brigade brought the pump, not the not the engine, just the pump. And uh, they tried to start the pump up, incendiary bombs were all dropping and everything. They tried to start the pump up and it wouldn't start to pump. So I got the pump started for them. I went up and started the pump for them. And uh, they were able to fight the fires. Then I came back down the road and uh, I was just going into our yard and uh, I noticed that a lady that was in the cellar with us, uh, she lived in a three-storey house in uh, up this bigger yard. And I noticed that an a incendiary bomb had gone through a roof. So I went down into the cellar and uh, I said to my dad, Mrs. Blackwell's house will be on fire if we don't do something about it. And as it happens, my father was a window cleaner. That was he had his own business. <coughs> uh, one of his jobs was cleaning the Royal Infirmary. And uh, so we, we rushed out, got the ladders, put them up three storey, got part of a bag of sand. We went up, broke the window and got through the window and uh, dropped the bag of sand on the incendiary bob and put it out. Now, if we hadn't have done that, there would have been Mrs Blackwell's house and four houses on the left-hand side could have all gone up in smoke. Then at the top of the yard, there was a chap that had a, 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 a business, decorating business, and there was paint and everything in that shop. So that could have gone up. And then down this side, there were three houses. Uh, and 
if the paint shop had gone up, they could have gone up as well. But uh, anyway, we put the fire out and uh, saved the problem. She was down our cellar with a little girl and uh, uh, her husband was in the army. Oh, there were trams all over the place on the moor and shop windows out and uh, oh, it was a right mess, yeah. And that was one night and then uh, a couple of nights later uh, he, he left off at the Wicker Arches yeah. and he started in the Wicker Arches all down the industrial side of Sheffield the next night, next time, and flattened a lot of the works. You know, Sheffield, well, I mean, with all the steel for tanks and ships and yeah. everything else were made here, wasn't it? I was 17 and uh, <coughs> uh, I got called up just after my birthday. Yeah, we had to catch the train down and uh, and uh, report at Leicester. Basic training, six weeks training. And during that period, I, I saluted the sergeant major and I shouldn't have done. And he, he said, not yet, son. I said, well, it might be one day. <laughs> I was in the REME. We did basic training uh, with armament, you know, and everything, uh, with your uh, rifle and everything. And we had injections there as well while we were there. And uh, when you were having your injections, they used to put a table at one side and a table at the other. And you used to walk up, put your injection in, and then you'd walk across to the other table and have the other injection in the other arm. And there were several people, several of the lads, that after they'd had the first injection, they were walking across and it <laughs> it had affected them and it faint, you know. But, uh, yeah, it was right. No, I didn't, but uh, it felt a bit queer after, but uh, I was all right. Well, marching, drilling, with your rifles and everything like that, you know, and uh, uh, doing a bit of rushing around, you know, uh, all wartime training. After after you'd done your training, they sent me to uh, uh, Nottingham. Yeah, to uh, we we had to uh, we were in Woolton Park in bell tents. And we used to go to Chilwell, which was the uh, big stores, and uh, work in there. Then after a while, we used to have to march down to the station, get on the train and go to Chilwell. Then march from, Chil uh, from the train station at Chilwell up to the depot, up to the big depot. And that's where we did our work. They moved me down to, they moved several of us down to Bris, Bris, uh, Banbury. And there was another big uh, depot down there and we worked there for a while. And uh, I always remember, <laughs> one day I, I got up and I got a face out here, I got toothache. And uh, I had to go and have treatment. I had the tooth out and uh, when I was in the dentist, he put me to sleep. And I always remember, as I went to sleep, he said, you was doing very well, you're 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 doing very well. You're doing very well. And so it went on, the sensation of the gas, you know, and uh, I came out of that and uh, I got a face out here. <laughs> But anyway, that, that was all right. And from there, Saturday nights, we used to get a, a freedom truck. It used to take us into uh, different places where we, you know, where we could just enjoy ourselves. But we were in these huts in this Harry Smith field. I always remember them. And uh, that's, that's where we were stationed for the time being. Well, we were in this uh, place at Banbury working, but then they, they moved us up to uh, Chilwell, Nottingham. Nottingham. Right. 
and we used to be supplying goods out of the stocks that were there. Yeah. A very, very big depot it were, army depot, and uh, that was that. But uh, we'd, su we'd supply goods from there, and then from there they moved us, uh, they said, right, you're going abroad. So we had a, a little leave, and uh, we, we were shipped up to uh, Glasgow. And uh, there was a big ship there. It was the the ship that we went abroad on was the Durban Castle. It was a, a, a big big pleasure boat, you know. Uh, used to do uh, trips all over the world, you know. And uh, we went on this Durban Castle, and we were the first. Uh, boat to go through the uh, Gibraltar because it was from Gibraltar across it was closed off but we were the first one to go through to uh, to the Middle East we we went through the uh, channel there and landed in uh, in the Middle East and we went through and uh, we we did land at a, at a place and then we got back on the boats and uh, we went right through to uh, Alexandria and uh, I know there'd, there'd been 300 foreign troops on board before us and the, a lot of the food that they eat was half rotten. And we were all of it sad because the, this sea f food that they were, we were all oh. <laughs> of it sad at port and <laughs> right mess. But anyway, we, we, we finally landed in Alexandria and sorted ourselves out. Well, there was an American supply train went one way and we were going other. And they stopped together and we, we, we grabbed a lot of the, <laughs> the American food and we got it on our train and, and uh, you know, but you just had to put up with what food you got, you know, the supplies kept coming through uh, automatically, so you, you, your food was what, what it was, whatever, you put up with what you got. But uh, from Alexandra, we went up to Tobruk and then up to Benghazi, but by this time the, the, everything had quietened off but we were in these I, I was in I joined this unit and uh, we went up there and in in Benghazi uh, there was a uh, transit camp where you were put while you were put out to a unit and I was re a re re uh, remiss storekeeper in other words I used to have uh, I, I used to, we used to have all spare parts for the vehicles and that. But uh, I went up to Tobruk and then from Tobruk uh, I was put out to uh, to 167 London Infantry Brigade. Uh, it was 56 London Div Division and uh, it was Talal Kabir. Uh, the actual transit camp. We when people were taken out to Tel Al Kabir, where they was where they was put, then placed with a unit that was out there that was short of men. If the unit was short of a man, they'd send you, depending on you. Like as I say, I was a storekeeper, and uh, I, I was trained that way, and I had to go. I had to go. And, to this unit because they were short of a storekeeper so that's how you got posted no it, no food and drink or anything like that uh, it was all vehicle parts and everything like that you know that we was but that that came uh, when when we were in uh, Tobruk the uh, we had uh, entertainers and it was the Western Brothers, I don't know if you've ever heard of them. The Western Brothers. 
and uh, they were making fun of the uh, the American soldiers. They were taking the uh, you know, yeah. and uh, these American soldiers, the one or two about, and they went the off with <laughs> when they were being <laughs> pulled to pieces a little bit. But anyway, there we were, and there was a boat that was sank in the harbour, and. Uh, while we were there, uh, we swam out to this boat and it's just getting on board and the uh, our police uh, came out and so we had to scarp it back a bit sharp and, uh, yeah, that went into Brook. Well, we got used to it, you know, but we used to suffer with his feet a lot, you know, because of that hot. Actually, in the desert where there was nothing, no shade, no nothing, just the sand, and it was red hot, the sand was red hot, never mind anything else. And as I say, you, you, if you got bad feet through it, if you wanted to wee, take your shoes and socks off and wee on your feet. Oh, well, it must have done that, because that's what the uh, doctors used to tell us, you know. Yeah, prob if you've got problems, just we on your feet and that's it. And that's what we used to do. Well, you're all together, good atmosphere amongst the lads, you know, but as I said, things had quietened off a little by then. But whilst we were back in Alexandra, uh, we had a padre came and he took us into uh, Jerusalem, Give us a, took us on a tour around Jerusalem. And uh, he took us into the church where Mary was leaning against the pillar. And one or two of us had special feelings. As we touched the pillar, a feeling went right through our body. Not everybody, but one or two of us did. And we had that feeling. Now, it'll come later, but... I, it, it, it's something you wouldn't believe. But he took us all out and we stood on the beach where the fishermen were fishing for the fishers and, and you know, stood there. And I also had a swim in the Sea of Galilee. And it was hot, hot and cold uh, spaces. And yeah, I swam in the Sea, sea of Galilee. We went back to uh, where we were stationed and I had my 21st birthday uh, out there on Mount Carmel and uh, there was a, a young young man that was a pal of mine uh, just through the army, uh, Frankie Eatmott and uh, we went out for the, for the evening and on the side of this mount, there was a, a restaurant and a tile dance floor, all the palm trees, the big moon, warm. And we had, I, I had no money and I had just enough money for a bottle of caramel hock. And him and me drank this bottle of caramel hock between us. And, uh, yeah, we... Uh, then we went back to our camp and slept the night and back to duties next day. Then not long after that, we were we were taken to the coast and uh, we went across to Italy. Uh, the invasion had already been on, so we went in after the invasion and we went up the right-hand side of Italy the old unit, the lorries and the 1500 weight and the breakdown lorry and everything, all on the ship. And, but they'd already landed then, so, you know, we'd no problems. We didn't invade, but we, we, were, we moved on as the, as the invasions. What, what always annoyed me was that you got all this business about uh, Normandy vets, Normandy, 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 and there was nothing, there's never been much mentioned about the invasion of Italy. 
you know, that that's just that just happened that. But Normandy, oh you know, and it just annoyed me a little. Well it still does. The uh the way they talk about Normandy and there's nothing about Italy. But there were some uh, nasty times in Italy as well. We were like a little uh, movable garage that you could we could follow, and the infantry used to go up <coughs> the front line, and we used to be just be just behind the front line, and uh, if a vehicle went up to the front line and got shelled or broke down or anything like that, we would go up and fetch the vehicle out of the front line and take it back to our to our little garage. And if we couldn't repair it there, it would go back to uh, divisional headquarters. And if they couldn't repair it, it would go further back still, you know. And that's how it used to work. But we used to go up to the front line where the fighting was, and uh, just hook it up and take it back. You know, that was our job. Wow. But all the the vehicles that we had was was loaded with all different spare parts for broken down vehicles and everything, you know. And, was, and I used to supply the uh, motor engineers with all these parts uh, or whatever they wanted. You know, you, we we were going up through uh, near Rimini, and uh, as we were going up, there was this. It wasn't a, an asphalt road or a, anything like it. It was just a more or less earth, but it was a road up through near Rimini, and uh, as we were going up. Uh, there wasn't supposed to be any Germans in this village. We were going up there, and uh, he wasn't supposed to be in this because it was a separate thing altogether. And he started shelling us. Now, I was sat in the back of this lorry on my rolled up bedding. And uh, the shelling was that heavy that one of the lads, one of the lads had been on a farm and it, it pinched a rabbit and a chicken and they were alive and our cook were going to cook them when we got somewhere, you know, and they'd been pinched from this farm. And I had to let them go. I, I tried to kill them. I couldn't. I couldn't kill a rabbit. Or a, <laughs> it's not within me to to do that. So I had to let them go and I let them go in the field. And I jumped out of the back of this lorry. And as I jumped out, there was a, in the edge where the rain had always run down. There was a guttering, and I laid in there. And my head was at the side of the, the back tire. There were two wheels on the back, but the side of the this back tire, and. As I just got my head down, the uh, this shell burst, and it burst the tire at side of my head. Now this is where I go back to this church. This feeling that I'd had, somebody were looking after me. Somebody up there were looking after me. And uh, anyway, we finally we got back in the lorry and rushed up this road and there was a, a a very, very big hill so he couldn't see us because the hill came between the us and, and we changed the, the uh, wheel on this lorry and we found out we'd gone past our destination. So we went back down the road and each driver said, we'll not go fast because it'll stir all the sandy, you know, and dust and that. But as they got on the road, woof, they were gone. <laughs> and we had to go up this little, just a, a, a narrow lane up to a church, and that was our destination. 
So each one went down separate, leaving a, a, minute, a minute or so between each one. So we got down the, to where this church were and went up this lane. There was all the uh, edged, like, uh, like our edge in there, all, all up the lane. And uh, we got to the church and uh, we started unloading one or two things. And uh, that night uh, I was on guard. And while we were on guard, there were 300 Germans broke through into the valley. So we were walking round church and this lad I had with me, he kept saying, did you hear that? Did you hear that? What was that? What was that? I said, look, I says, you march around one side. I says, now march around the other side. I said, we'll meet halfway. <laughs> so that's what we did. And uh, at, at the end of our shift, uh, what happened? Uh, when we got to this church, I had to take our sign, which was the 56 London Infantry big, uh, Div, and it was a black cat that was on the sign. And I had to take it right down to the bottom of this drive that we'd come up where we'd come off the road, plant it there, so that any of our units that wanted to use us as a garage could see that that's where we were. So I took this sign down the road. It was always my job to do that, being the storekeeper. And and I was just putting it down near the bushes. And as I bent down forward, a bullet went past me. I heard it whiz past my ear. So a sniper had sniped at me. And as if I hadn't have bent down, I should have got it in the head. But... Uh, Bending down to put the thing down just saved my life. Wow. Once again, somebody were looking after me. So I just dropped the sign and rushed up the up the side of all up the side of this edging and got back into uh, to with the unit. Well, I just I just uh, uh, went back and I, I told them what had happened and uh, but. Uh, that was the night that 300 Germans broke through into the valley. So, you know, things weren't very comfortable, but uh, anyway, we, we got through all right. Anyway, as I said, I was on duty, guard duty, and uh, it, we finished our hours duty, and I went off duty, and uh, we went into this church, and I got my bedding out, Put it on a put it in it put it on a seat, and when I got my bedding out, I put my my uh, waterproof uh, down first, and then I got I got as I got it out, it was full of shrapnel holes, and I'd been sat on that. If I hadn't have got out of the back of that slurry, yeah. someone else were looking after me up there again. So that was three times that we got away. And uh, next day, we... we a, chap, a chap that was with us and, and me wanted to go to the toilet and there was no toilets. So we went down the field in, and got under the edge, dropped our pants and that's where... <laughs> that was our toilet. But as we would... Just down there, a shell, he started shelling us, and we finished up running, running up this field, pulling our trousers up. <laughs> and the, he, there was some Arabs in this field. That, uh, why they were there, I don't know, but they must have belonged to division and that, some unit, you know. And uh, it killed, the, the shelling killed some of them, and uh, one or two horses in the field has killed them as well. But we got back into the church and uh, we were all right. But uh, that that was three times that I, I felt that somebody was looking after me. It's, it's an unusual story, but uh, and a story that people will not probably not believe. But it is true every minute. Yeah, the, apparently there was. Uh, we had a, a stream of vehicles going up. 
and it, and it, Jerry uh, Germans hit the first one and hit the last one, so that they couldn't turn them round. Yeah, that was casino. But there was a lot of basic in the, in Italy, but uh, I remember once we came out the line and we were in this big house. And with all this, with all this booze, vermouth and stuff, you know, <laughs> the lads were stood up against the wall, and all of a sudden they flop on the floor. <laughs> From there, we uh, we went further north, and as we went just past Rim, going up just past Rimini, there was a chap hanging from the neck from a post, hanging from the neck. The Germans had ugly. And we went further up and uh, we finished up in Trieste. And uh, there was a big torpedo store and there was an office, separate office, and our sergeant major sar and sergeant and corporal slept in the office and we slept in this trophy, torpedo store. And some huge rats in there, big rats. But we couldn't do much about that. And uh, during the night, one of the lads came across from this office and said, can you come and help? So we went down to this office and a rat was on the, uh, on the mosquito net. Couldn't get its claws out of the netting. So what we did, we lifted the mosquito net up so that the rat was in the bottom and we swung it and it hit the wall and that's how we killed the rat. But, uh, yeah, well, <laughs> horrible, wasn't it? But <laughs> that's, that's what we had to put up with. But th this, this is wartime, isn't it? You know, I mean, these things happen. Yeah, if any vehicle wanted repairing, it's from our division. But they used to come to us, you see, and we used to repair them at that place until we moved on. I mean, they might just break down ordinarily, you know, and we'd have to go and fetch it in a tow wagon, or fetch it in or whatever. Depended on circumstances. We were in it part of the time, but uh, it, it was mainly when we had to go up, up to the front line and, and fetch a, a vehicle out, you know. But all the time you've, you've been shelled. I mean, you know, I mean... We weren't that far behind the line because we belonged to the division that was in the fight, fighters, you see. You, you hadn't got your rifle, well, you got your rifle with you, but you couldn't be loading the vehicle on and to bring back and firing your rifle at the same time, you know, so it was very difficult. Well, we, we took it in turns because, you know, you took it in turns in going up and fetching them back. Uh, I can remember once, once standing on a bridge and uh, I was looking at the road that come up to this bridge and there was a, a chap on a motorbike, a soldier, they used to call him Danar. He was a soldier on a motorbike and I was looking down at this road and as he was coming up, I can remember seeing a shell explode at one side of him and at the other side, each side of the road, and he, he managed to get through. Yeah, a shell each side of the road and him coming up through the middle, and he got away with it, yeah. Yeah, it was just your luck, you know, I mean, it was circumstances that, uh, as they were, you know. Yeah, you, you, it was a worry, but uh, I, I, you, you kind of accepted it, you know. You were in the army, there were a war on, You've got a job to do, and that's it. Everybody does a job, and, you've, and we succeeded. But uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what it would be like to be on the losing side. You know, it would be a different proposition, I suppose. Yeah. Well, it was getting towards the end when we we, we came up and we finished up in Trieste. Now Trieste belongs to Italy, but the Yugoslavs said it belonged to them. So there was, uh, I think there were about 12 or 13 of us, and we were in this torpedo factory, and there was a torpedo boat that we, uh, we, we 
having a bit of fun, we, we got on the boat and we went out and uh, we uh, boat broke down. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what they did, they took the floorboards up and used them as paddles and, and uh, I dropped my pants and everything and I, I swam a shoving boat back to, <laughs> to where we got it from. <laughs> Otherwise, we were in trouble if we didn't take the boat back. <laughs> but this was in Trieste, <clears throat> and we were right on the side of the beach. And this, this, the Yugoslavs said they owned Trieste, and they were coming to get it. So, as I said, there were 12 or 13 of us, and we were told to dig in because they were going to come in to attack us. And uh, we could see them, you know, like a cowboy's uh, horse and he used to have this, you know, covered wagon like. That was in front with the horses and there were hundreds of, of Yugoslav soldiers behind them coming going to, to attack us. And we were, to, we were told to dig in. And as I say, in our unit, there were about 15. And uh, anyway, we come around, and I don't know how we did it, but somehow we finished up, we played them at football. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we played. They picked a team and we got a team and we played them at football. And uh, that, that was in CS. Before they got to us, we were... You know, I mean, because we're outnumbered anyway. Yeah, I can't really remember how it came about, but uh, I don't know. We, we just played about football on this beach, and uh, <laughs> we're all sort of happy together, and uh, there were no animosity at all or anything, you know. Then from Trieste, uh, when the war was over, where it finished, that's where we finished. We all got to leave separately from Trieste because you just couldn't uh, believe what were happening like, you know. And we all got to leave from Trieste. Yeah, and I came through Switzerland on the train, France and that, came home. And uh, while I was at home, I, we had a, about a month's leave, I think it was. While I was at home, Mum and Dad used to go down to a pub on Bramall Street in Sheffield called Elliot's. And uh, they said this Saturday night, we're going to meet our friends in Elliot's, so you're coming for a drink. You celebrate your 21st birthday. You've done it abroad, you might as well do it here now. Like. So we, uh, we, I went down and... Before I went in the army, I had a lot of pals, lads and lasses, and we all used to go to Lusset Road Bass, and there used to be a dance there on a Saturday night at Lusset Road Bass. And all these lads and lasses oh, all knew that I'd come on leave. So they all said, right, let's go down to Elliot's and uh, have a drink with Roy's on leave. So they all came down. And whereas I got drinks coming in from one side, I had drinks coming in from then, you know, because they all knew circumstances. And uh, I had quite a good drink. That, that was celebrating my 21st in Sheffield. All my old pals used to go to this dance and they all came down to this pub. And I didn't know her at all, but she was amongst them. And she come down to this pub. She come in with a chap. And uh, I don't know what happened to him, but he went home. And she was left on her own. So when the pub was closing, we, uh, we bought a, a, a case of beer, bottles of beer. And we took them up to uh, uh, the dance at uh, Hanover Square, I forget what they called it, used to run dances. 
and we took the bottles up there and we carried them up and she come with, with us and it finished up that I took her home and that's how we, we first met. She came in with one chap, went home with me and uh, I don't know, after that I, I went back off a leave and I kept writing to her and writing to her and uh, a, few, a couple of months I think, you know, a couple of three months before my D-mob number. You had to wait while, you, you had a D-mob number. And when your number come up, you were D-mobbed. Given the suit and what have you, yeah. you know, and... Uh, well, we come, you come back from, you, you got, I got demobbed at Trieste, when I was at Trieste, and I came home on the train, and you come through D-mob uh, station, and you, you give them clothes and that, you know. Uh, suit and shirt and everything, and that's that's what you came home in. Well, you had to settle down to it. It took you a little while to settle down, but uh, you know you, you gradually got settled down and got a job, and uh, uh, and and that was it. Oh, it was hard work. It was uh, you know I mean it was tough going, but uh, that was the war, wasn't it? You know I mean uh, you don't expect easy time during war time. No, it's it's not easy. It's not easy life in the forces, and uh, uh, whilst we was just behind the line, and generally we we had to keep going up, but shelling and everything, you know, you, you there was no easy times. <laughs>